In this video, we're not going to talk about something that we have to do when it comes to olfactory analysis, but we're going to talk about the classification of these aromas to understand much better all of the descriptors that we talked about. In detail, we're going to try to understand the concepts of primary aromas, the secondary aromas, and tertiary aromas. I repeat it, when it comes to wine description, when it comes to the analysis of the smell of the wine, you do not have to say primary, secondary, tertiary. All you need is the aroma groups that I presented to you. But to guide your expectations, to guide your analysis in a better way, maybe you should be familiar also with this concept. Primary aromas, primary smell aromas, are the aromas that are totally connected with the nature of a grape. So the primary aromas are only dependent on the grape, on the type of the grape that we have in our hand. Some of the grapes are very aromatic. No matter what, they're gonna have certain aromas with them because these grapes, they carry some chemical molecules with them and that's why they will almost always present some certain characteristics with them. A classical example is Gewitz Trominer. Gewitz Trominer has this rose aroma, for example. When you think of Gewitz Trominer, you will think of rose immediately. It's not a rule, but this is something that will happen in most of the cases. Malvasia and Moscato, these are aromatic grapes that will always have some sort of aromas that are totally dependent on the nature of their existence. Because primary aromas, as I said, they depend on the grape. Some of the grapes, they're not 100% aromatic, but these are semi-aromatic. Like for example, Sauvignon Blanc, Cabernet Sauvignon. This classical example of green bell pepper that comes from Cabernet Sauvignon is an indication of a primary aroma. This is not dependent on the fermentation of, or on maturation. This is dependent on the nature of that grape. Like uh, you also hear maybe from Merlot, very often you hear about the tomato leaves this is again something, this is an aroma that you perceive due to the primary nature, due to the primary aromas of the grape. Okay, so you understood that primary aromas are totally dependent on the nature of the grapes. And really here you can think about some fruit aromas or you can think about some vegetative aromas. You can maybe think of some herbal aromas. This is something that's dependent on the grape, but we are not in the world of buttery, creamy identifications. These are mostly simple, like fruit, Flower, uh, vegetative, these all can come from the primary nature of the grapes. The second group here is the secondary aromas, as the name suggests, and these are things that are dependent on the fermentation. Anything we notice from the wine that we consider as secondary aromas, they come as a result of the fermentation. These are not totally dependent on the grape. These are also the results of the molecules of the things that are created in the end of the fermentation. Some grapes that are very neutral, for example, when they get into fermentation, they will present a lot of fruit aromas. Banana is an example that comes to my mind. If you perceive a lot of banana aroma from a wine, you may think that it's directly dependent on the fermentation. Here, between parentheses, what is the second type of fermentation that takes place in wine production? It's MLF. It's like a pseudo-fermentation, it's like a fake fermentation in which malic acid gets turned into lactic acid. And this creates stabilization, this creates a lot of balance in the wine, but this also has an implication on the olfactory level of the wine. All of these creamy, buttery sensations that we perceive may be dependent on MLF. So it would be right to think that these creamy, buttery, milky sensations are secondary aromas that are dependent on a fermentation process, which is MLF. You can also consider in this group all of the aromas that are created due to the yeast contact. All of these bready, doughy feelings that we have from a wine. All of these yeast provoking feelings. All of this croissant, the bread, the boulangerie example. Remember, we always talked about them. These are maybe post-fermentation things that take place. This is the contact of the wine with the yeast, which is dependent on fermentation or post-fermentation techniques, but not aging. So here in this case, you can also think about these aromas, these bread aromas, da aromas, that are considered as secondary aromas. And finally, we can think about the tertiary aromas. And these are the aromas that are dependent on maturation. These things are dependent on the aging of the wine, either in barrique, either in wood barrels, either in steel, or either in bottle. Here, we're not in the world of fresh fruits, you know, fresh flowers. Everything is gonna become much more interesting, you know, a typical thing is the spicy feelings that the wines adopt when they're in barrique. Vanille is a classical example. They may present some vanilla aromas when they are matured in barrique. The toasted character also comes from this. 
some coffee chocolate aromas that might occur as a result of aging the wine in barrique, in wooden barrels. Again, you can think about oxidation, all of the things that occur as a result of oxidation. Here you could think of, again, spices, about honey, about medicinal tones that I mentioned earlier. You could think of petroleum, which is a classical example of maturation. For some red wines, you're gonna start perceiving some leather, some animal notes. The vegetative tones can come into play also. These are not rules. Mushroom, wet mud, soil, earth, game, leather. These are all of the aromas that you may expect as a result of maturation. And this is called the tertiary aromas. Of course, your ability to talk about all of these depends a bit on the experience. But use your logic. Do not think about very fresh, very fruity, very flowery things, very floral things when you're with a wine that has been aged for 10 years. Here, you need to condition yourself to think about more leather aromas, more animal aromas, more toasted aromas, because there is some sort of maturation, potentially in barrique. I hope this has been useful to put all of these different descriptors we talked about in context.